Listen to these words of wisdom. If you're valuable to someone, they will find a place for you. This whole interview boils down to this one perfect quote that Danny, a 37-year-old career changer from the Actuary Accelerator community, said about getting his first actuarial job. Danny had the idea of becoming an actuary put in his ear since about the age of five years old. Danny believes that you should really enjoy your career and teaching was no longer serving that purpose for him. So he moved on, had an actuarial job made for him, and the rest is history. In this video, you're going to learn exactly what Danny did to make this happen for himself so that you too can follow the same steps and hopefully experience the exact same result. Whether you're still in college now or you've been out of school for years, maybe even decades. By the way, I'm Bria, Associate of the Society of Actuaries and Actuarial Career Coach. So Danny, what inspired you to get into the actuarial career? So I'm a career changer from teaching, um, even from when I was probably like five years old. I think the word actuary was kind of whispered in my ear just because I was like the math kid. Um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do when I went to college. I have a really weird background where I started in business, hated it, uh, went to journalism uh, guy. Um, and I graduated, I realized journalism that has no money in it. Um, so I got an economics degree at the very end. The last couple semesters kind of sucked, but I had to do what I had to do. Um, then I had a sports writing job while I went back. Sure. I love teaching for the first five, six years. I don't think COVID helped me love teaching anymore. Um, and I always thought, even though I like teaching, it wasn't a forever career that I was always going to like kind of branch off and do something else. Actuary always seemed very awesome to me just because it was very black and white with a lot of stuff. I like solving problems. I like math. And toward the end of teaching, I just missed using my brain. Um, and I remember starting to study like right in the last couple months of teaching and toggling between calculus and then like algebra one. It was very difficult. <laughs> I, um, but I found AAC um, six months before I resigned because I organized person in the world. I was like, can someone please just like lay and I found it to be perfect. It helped um, during the interview process. It came in handy for a lot of questions. I'm even staying on as I so I can practice stuff. Um, so to get started, I have a job at Lincoln Financial that started. What I love about Danny's journey is that he never treated his career like it was all or nothing. He tried so many different things. He tried business related topics. He tried journalism. He tried sports writing. He tried teaching. And he liked all those things until he didn't. And then he decided to move on and just try something different. I really believe that a lot of people treat their career like it is an all or nothing thing. They think if they want to get into the actuarial field that this is going to be what they do for the rest of their lives. And that's not necessarily true. The actuarial career opens up so many doors for you because there are so many great qualifications that you gain on your way to becoming an actuary and the experience and skill set that you develop while you're working in the position are skills that so many other types of fields need and want. So there's lots of opportunity to move around. So if you feel pulled towards the actuarial career or even some other career, just go for it because you never know right now where you're going to be in five, 10, 15 years from now. You only get to that place by going through the paths that will take you there. Now, by no means does that mean that it's going to be easy or that it's going to be scary. Danny admits that he had feelings of imposter syndrome, anxiety going into this, just like you might too. I, I mean, I'm 37, so I'm, I'm an old man. Uh, I probably, all my teacher colleagues were like, if you don't get out now, it's going to be forever. Uh, you're going to be here forever. So I took the leap. It was very scary, not going to lie. Plenty of days with anxiety and like imposter syndrome. Like, what am I doing here? Um, and the people I've met at Lincoln uh, have been so nice that I don't feel that anxiety going in. Uh, it's nice to have people that actually communicate with you. I don't know if any other former teachers have explained their experience. I'm like super excited. I'm so much happier. I enjoy the studying aspect of it. So it's all been a lot of fun. So what was your source of motivation for this, despite having anxiety and imposter syndrome and being later in your career? Luckily, I have a wonderful wife and uh, we actually got married last year. Uh, summer so I could take her health insurance she's also a teacher um you got to get out you're so like you're you just seem miserable doing it I loved coaching sports I also did that that's the one aspect I do miss but it just it was boring for me and not in a way where I dislike the kids or anything I just felt like I'm not using my brain like it's just 
the same thing over and over again. And I was getting really frustrated with like having to explain factoring for the hundredth time. And I just like missed that probability. It's like, that's been my whole life. I do like weird, like bracket related things. I flip coins is like, just always been me. So I needed to really like challenge me. And this is going to be it. If you feel miserable in your career, then you have let it go way too far. Obviously, there was a time when you liked your job. That's why you originally got into it. But over time, things have changed and your enjoyment for the career has gradually decreased. So why spend more of your life doing something you dread when there are so many other opportunities out there for you? Now, coming from a teaching career, Danny knew that his technical skills were not at the level that they need to be in order to get an entry-level actuarial position. And that's just because as a teacher, you really don't typically need those high level tech skills. So here's what Danny did about it. I knew that going in, that would be the biggest gap between the, the college graduates and me. I would have all the social skills. I would have all like the, the communication stuff. When it came to technical stuff, that would be the big question they all asked me. Um, and I actually, every time I got asked that, my answer involved AAC. And I just said, look, I knew this was going to happen. Um, so I needed to find a place where I could learn that stuff on my own because that's what I had to do. And I was like, this place, everyone I asked, they're like, this sounds awesome. And I just described like how you have the ninja course and you can either do that or you can kind of do it on your own. And I just said how I've been kind of just playing around with the different things. And I named certain things that I'm good at, like the lookup. I just was just able to kind of like list some stuff. And am I the biggest expert ever? No, I'm definitely going to have a learning curve still when I join it. I know I'm going to. Uh, but I'm willing to learn. And I think they saw that I'm willing to kind of like figure out the stuff. Miss and so even just mentioning AAC, they were like, oh, guy like wants to go get better on his own. Even if you're, you don't tell them like, oh, I kind of had trouble with this or whatever, but they see that I was willing to bridge that gap and I could just see the eyes light up every time. And I, four or five interviews, just, I didn't even like study for that kind of thing. I just knew like, I want to talk about this site because it really helped me and just, I just want to talk about it because it's going to be when I work also. I didn't even do the things in order, I don't think. Like the first part I did, obviously. Then I was jumping around because like while teaching, I'm studying. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to study for the test. First thing you're thinking, like, don't study for the test right away. Like, but I already signed up. So I just kind of jumped around. Um, and I like went from Excel to studying. And so you don't have to do the AAC order that it's done. But every part of it really did help a lot. I used every single part of it at some point. Awesome, that's really good to hear. Like, I definitely would encourage someone if they're just starting out their actuarial career to go in the order there because I do believe it's the most efficient. But for you, you already had some of the stuff that you needed. So it totally makes sense that you would be jumping around to different sections. And I think when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that you actually showed your, a project was it on the screen to some of the employers yep. during your interview? So I think it's the very first project. I think it was actually the one that it guides you with. I forget your one colleague's name, but she was awesome when she threw it. I did every step by step and I had it. So it looked really, and since all the interviews are like this now, I made sure to have it up on my screen left. I was like, oh, by the way, do you mind if I just show you this project instead of believing what I say? here's the proof I, I can do it so you see you, you can't dismiss it at all here it is um and they were very receptive to it i did it twice um you just have to kind of find a spot to say like hey like i know i have all these technical skills do you mind if i just share this project real quick 10 seconds get it up on the screen here 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 and, oh that looks so good and i was like oh i don't know like i don't have any frame of reference for what's good and what's not so i was just hoping it looked good and they were all very impressed if employers don't get to see your technical skills firsthand, then they really just have to rely on your word that you know how to use these programs. This is why so many employers do an Excel test or have you complete an Excel project before they'll even do higher level interviews with you. But for the employers that don't have you go through those processes, that method that Danny just mentioned about sharing an actuarial Excel project or programming project that you've done, sharing that with the employer during an interview is really a great way to make sure that they have seen and you have demonstrated your skills to the fullest of your ability. It's been, what, 11 years since I made a resume. <laughs> um, and I thought it was pretty good, but I, you said something like every single thing has to be specific. And that spoke a lot to me. Like, instead of just writing words that who knows what they mean, 
you have to write like did this thing raised it by 10 percent or whatever and once i did that and was able to show that stuff i was like oh you basically just have to prove what you can do you can't just say stuff and the more you can prove it on the resume the better of a chance you have and the job i got actually wasn't posted at all i had like i'm not a very i'm not good at sales it's like the worst i never want to search for a job ever again but i had a friend's wife who worked at Lincoln Financial and I saw some like higher level job posting qualified for that but who knows so I messaged my friend and I applied for these jobs I know I was going to get rejected from and I said hey I just want you to know I applied for this if there's anybody like any way you know this person the recruiter you can like let them know and she did and the recruiter like reached out to me and said like oh, I just want to like talk to you and we ended up talking for half an hour and she's like oh I like you so much I want to like doing the actuarial, de that actuarial development program, which was not posted at the time. So I got a job that wasn't posted. So if you're valuable to someone, they will find a place for you. Um, if you can prove your worth to someone, even just an, an informational interview, they will find a place for you. This this is the reason for the Actuary Accelerator community. There is a lot of competition in the actuarial field today, so you need to do whatever you can to stand out and get noticed. And that's exactly what we show you in the Actuary Accelerator community. Does that mean that you're going to be able to get a job made for you like Danny did? Well, no, it does not mean that. And it's very rare that this type of thing does happen, but it can. If an employer knows that they're going to eventually need someone down the road, then why not get you in, get you learning, get you all set up so that when the time comes that they do actually really need someone, you're available and ready to go. That saves them so much time they don't need to rush when the time comes, and it means that they won't potentially have to settle on a less than ideal candidate. I actually recorded an interview with Ashley, another AAC member, a while back, who had this same thing happen to her. She got a job made for her just because her qualifications were so great that the company couldn't let her go. My, my manager's eight years younger than I am. And they were like, are you okay with that kind of stuff? I, wanna, I just wanna work with like people that are smart. And, and I know a lot of people that are younger, it's like money, I wanna make money as fast as I can. After 10 years of teaching where you make tons of money, not really, um, money's not the number one thing. Like you find a place where you feel good and the money will just come. So don't go into an interview thinking that like you am 100%, they all you. Um, and I learned a lot about that too. I remember one interview I had and the guy asked me a question that I had just answered. These are people I'd be working under. And I, I know inter like people that interview, they do a hundred of them, they get bored. But I just answered a question and you clearly weren't like weren't listening. And that was a turnoff to me. I didn't say anything like I just kind of went along. But then I had another interview and the person clearly listened to me and brought something up like, oh, I had this question, but you answered it already. And I was like, oh, that's what I want to hear. And I ended up going with them over the I felt more valued. So that's important. Just remember that, like, you matter also. You can turn down a job if you don't feel it's the right fit. When you go into an interview, you have to remember that this is not all about you trying to prove that you're a great fit for their company. This is also about you trying to determine if you actually want to work there and if this company fits the needs and desires that you have for your career. And those are the types of questions that you need to be asking during the interview so you know that this is going to be a good place, a good fit for you. That's why I recommend creating a dream 10 list. And basically this is a list of 10 companies that you have researched and you already know that you would love to work for. As I was discussing the dream 10 list with Danny, he actually said that he did this as part of the Actuary Accelerator community and Lincoln Financial was on it. Did you say you did that? Yep. Awesome. I don't know if I did like the level of research for each one. one of them. Cause once I did the thing, I was like, I'm selling out for this. I said, I even said, I'm like, I'm not letting them not hire me. This is such a good thing that I like so much. I will not give them the other option. I mean, obviously like bad thing, things can happen, but that's the, like, I just put all your eggs in one basket, but I just felt like it was such a good fit. And I had such a good feeling that I just, I got into it and it worked out. I love that. It's like, <laughs> you had such determination that this was going to work. And the fact is like, maybe it, it, it's possible that it couldn't have worked this time, but I think with that level of determination and desire to work for a specific company or certain companies, you're just going to keep trying and trying and trying until it eventually works and continue to build up your qualifications, get better at interviewing, all that sort of stuff so that eventually they really can't say no to you. Yep. The other advice I think that helped me a lot before my interview, 
would research a little bit and I read the job description a bunch of times. If it was on Zoom, I would have a different device to the left of the that just had the job description lit there. So if I like had just like a quick, like, oh my God, look and match it up. My one friend was like, I think only 10% of people read the job description. And I was like, what? 10%? I was like, that shouldn't you be reading the job description? Like that's what you're trying to do. So if you read the job just research kind of like the business of the last year of the company, like, oh, did they go last month? What kind of annuities do they do? And you just kind of put that in or two sentences that shows that you care. You don't care quite as much as you let on. That is an impressive thing to them. They always like a new what like what I was going to be doing as much as I could. I'm surprised that so many people don't do that. I can't believe that's like a thing. <laughs> Danny said it really well here. Do not go into your job interview without having researched the company and thoroughly having read through the job post. You should have a list of the things that you want to make sure you highlight to the employer, the qualifications that make you great, the skills and experience you have. And you really want to touch base on the job post. Check for all the little specific details that they mention in the job post and make sure that you highlight those during your interview as well. Because clearly, those are the things that the employer really is adamant about having in the perfect candidate. Okay, so there was more to this interview, but with all my mid-interview add-ins that I <laughs> put it into the video for the YouTube video, it has just become so long. So, for those of you that are AAC members already, I'm going to add a section in the AAC called Success Stories where you can go and watch this interview, the whole thing, plus all the other success stories that I have completed over the last several years. There are quite a few of them. And if you are not a member yet, then we would absolutely love to have you. The AAC guides you step by step on everything you need to do to become an amazing candidate for actuarial positions and get your first job just like Danny did. And fortunately, Danny even offered to answer any questions you have about the program or just about becoming an actuary in general. So I'll put his contact information down below in the description. I can give you my contact awesome. info. I'm, I'm happy to do that because people do that for me. So I am happy to pay it forward and do that for other people as well. You have done a huge service for me and others. Um, I am going to tell everyone that I know about it that matters to. Um, I'm very loyal to people when they help me. Um, and you help me a lot, especially for someone who's not super organized. So, uh, the mo like the, everyone that I told, they were like, oh, this sounds awesome. I never heard of this. So I know that I'm going to try to take on a little bit of like, Hey, look at this thing. Hey, look at this thing. Uh, cause it was helpful. Uh, there, even if you think, you know, everything you don't, that's what that's, that's me. I think I know everything and I didn't, and you helped a lot.